So something easier than using an MP4 file in Compressor to make a DCP is to use a freeware program called DCP-O-Matic. That way we can use this MKV file directly. We don't have to do any other destructive transcoding to it. We can just use the raw file ripped directly from the disk to make the file. The only downside to using DCP-O-Matic that I've found is it takes a long time to transcode a feature film to DCP, I'm somewhere in the realm of like 12 to 16 hours, at least on my machine. DCP-O-Matic is not GPU dependent, it's CPU dependent. So it's not using your graphics processor hardly at all, it's just using your CPU. And so the more powerful CPU you have, the faster it goes. But honestly, I've seen a peak of like two frames a second on my machine and I have a decent processor. So it's just something that you got to you got to plan ahead for if you're going to use DCP Omatic, but is probably now at this point what I would recommend doing. So I'm going to launch that program, DCP Omatic 2. Um, this is kind of intimidating to use at first because it, it doesn't hold your hand through anything. You really have to know kind of what you're doing, where to look. Um, so luckily I'm here to hold your hand and tell you where to look. First thing we want to do to convert this MKV file is go to uh, file and new. And we can put the film name that we're going to do, or if we were doing a batch conversion. So if like we were converting several different files in one batch, we would name the name of this project. So for this example, we're converting the film Good Time. And we want to we want to tell it right off the bat where the output destination is going to be. So um, because we're making a DCP from this immediately, we absolutely want to go to an external hard drive. But I have all of my USB drives pulled up on my computer right now, and I'm not actually going to be making this DCP. So. But always remember um, on our export uh, options right here, devices, click on your external hard drive, wherever that is. Um, but for now, I'm just going to tell it my desktop is good. Thank you. I'm going to click OK. So I've just created the project. I haven't actually associated any media with this yet. The first thing you want to do is associate that media by clicking Add Files. And I'm going to click this MKV file and click Open. It's going to do a really quick examination on the file itself. And you can scroll through and check it out if you'd like. So this is how our content currently looks like. Not great, right? What we need to do is put this in a proper container and tell it to use the proper aspect ratio for both the media and the container that we're looking for. So because this is a 1920 by 1080 file, it thinks immediately that I want to scale this to 178. Um, to make a 16 by 9 file, um, but I don't. I don't want to do that because this film is in the scope aspect ratio. And so what I'm going to do is click scale to scope right here, 239. But we're still in the flat container, right? So obviously that's not what we want to do. So I'm going to click on this DCP tab over here and down in this video box, um, the container right now is DCI flat, I'm looking for DCI scope. Whoa, that's still messing us up. Why is that? Let's go back to this tab. So I'm scaling this to scope, um, but I'm scaling this entire 1920 by 1080 file to scope. That is not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to tell the program to crop this image. So we're going to be looking to crop the top and crop the bottom if you watched the tutorial on how to use handbrake. So I know from that, that I need to crop this top portion of the image by 140 pixels. And I need to crop the bottom portion of this image by 138 pixels. So what that means is we're getting a master aspect ratio um, of 1920 by 802, which is 239 to one, exactly what we're looking for. And we're scaling these dimensions right here to these dimensions, 2048 by 858. Um, the exact same aspect ratio, but a little bit bigger to comply with uh, the DCI scope container. Before we go to audio, let me just talk about color spaces really quick. Because this is a regular Blu-ray, not in uh, a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, we're definitely looking to just stay in the Rec 709 color space. That's what this is ultimately meant for. Um, P3 uh, is a color space that's meant 
specifically for cinema exhibition. And so that means that a lot of colorists will color specifically for the P3 color space. Um, the P3 color space is wider than Rec. 709, so that means you get specifically more variation in your greens and in your reds. If you color for the P3 color space and then ultimately end up distributing to Rec. 709, it's probably going to look like some muddled garbage uh, at certain points. So because this Blu-ray, like I said, is meant for the Rec. 709 color space, that's specifically where we're going to keep it. Um, there's more information on dcp matics website about this if you're curious. Um, the only other thing that I would maybe recommend knowing is the sRGB, and that's if you're using like a, a file from Photoshop that you made, um, or like a still, like a, something from a JPEG that you're using to convert to a DCP. But since we're using, you know, a piece of a piece of digital film to do this, uh, we're looking for the Rec. 709 color space. Um, we can check out our audio readout, and we can see that we do have a 5.1 file on this, so that's great. If you'd like to, you can show a graph of the audio levels, and it'll do an examination of what the actual waveforms look like over the duration of the film. Because this is a professionally mixed and mastered um, and distribution Blu-ray file, I have no reason to do that. I, 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 it would be a little bit of sacrilege to affect what the audio engineers have done in post to mix this film. So I'm gonna leave it exactly the way that it is. There's no reason to mess with that. Um, in subtitles, we also don't have any subtitles on this. So we're pretty much done with the content side of this. Uh, what we need to look at now is the actual um, destination file, the DCP that we're gonna make. So you can see here, it really simple, kind of holds your hand through this portion of it, is that the name of this film that we're making the DCP out of is just good time and I want that to be the same. So what's really cool here is I can click details and it's gonna show us the DCI compliant naming conventions. Um, the current version is one, though this is technically incorrect uh, how it's stated right here and we will change this in a moment. Um, if we want to, we can include our audio language, English, um, our subtitle language, which we don't have. So I think we would put XX, uh, territory, um, I, I feel like this is all unnecessary. This is for our own exhibition purposes. We have no reason to be doing this. But if there's any reason that you wanted to fill this in, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. You can also say uh, this is like a red band trailer if you want, or just like a temporary version if we were going to be giving this to like a test audience or something like that. But obviously, for our purposes, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here, too, is just hitting copy as name. So that's gonna put this, this right here into our editable field. Because it's the first version of our file that we're making, it's redundant to actually say that that's the first. So I'm just gonna delete that. So it's good time feature, scope, English, no subtitles, 5.1, 2K. And then it's gonna show the date that it was created. And then it's gonna show if it's gonna be an IOP or SIMT file, and then the OV for original version. In this case, uh, having an IOP file is fine, but I'm actually going to do a SMPT file and I'm going to change the name in here accordingly. I'm just going to make this DCP on a single reel, um, which means that it's going to be like one big master file. I could split it up and then we could go back and edit it if we need just specific chunks, but for now, for our purposes, this is absolutely fine. Um, and then what we can also do is just double check that in fact we're doing a scope, yep, 2K file. You do have the option of making a 4K file, but that's absolutely unnecessary. Our frame rate, it's going to be 24. You do have options to make other frame rates. So if you have content from Europe or wherever else, uh, that's 25 frames a second, we can totally do that. Um, if you have DVD content, we can make that 30 frames a second. Or if you have, you know, something, a documentary sometimes are shot 30 frames a second. And then we do have the option of high frame rate stuff as well, 48, 50, and 60. I have seen this two times in my four years doing this, and both of them are amateur productions. So uh, if you're not Peter Jackson, you're not distributing, or fucking Ang Lee for that matter, you're not distributing in high frame rates like this. So don't worry about that. Most, more often than not, you're going to be keeping it at 24. Um, we're making a JPEG 2000 DCP in this example. So we have a maximum uh, bit rate right here of 250 per second. I know that's a huge jump. Our content is only 
30 megabytes a second, maybe at the most, 32 megabytes a second at the most. But for DCPs, um, probably a minimum of 100 megabytes a second is what you're going to be looking at. And then you can go as high, the cap is 250 megabytes a second. So really, um, I've never seen an issue with using 100 megabytes a second. Uh, like I said, this is N distribution format Blu-ray. So if I was using like a, a ProRes 422 file that I exported from my NLE to make this DCP from, I would use a maximum of 250 megabytes a second because my ProRes files are probably going to be much higher than my, my uh, Blu-ray file that I've ripped right now. But because this is just a Blu-ray file, I'm going to say 100 is totally fine. Um, if you ever need to look through this too, you can click play and you can actively see um, what your file is going to look like. Um, what's really great about DCP Omatic, uh, like I've said, is that we're just ripping directly from that MKV file. So we are retaining the, the intended grain um, in the look of the image. If we were transcoding to an MP4 file from like by using Handbrake, chances are if we're not doing everything correctly, we're going to lose um, that that grain actually, or it's going to start looking like uh, digital noise, and it's probably not going to look very good. So that's one huge advantage of using DCP Omatic is there's no middleman, there's no intermediate transcode process you have to go through. You can just go directly from your source file to your digital cinema package. So to wrap this up, we just have to tell this program that we're done and we want to start creating this file. So we say jobs and we say make DCP. This is going to tell me right now because I'm trying to put this on my hard drive or my desktop with only 10 gigabytes left on my, my machine right now, um, that this is going to be a 75 gigabyte file. Are you sure you want to do this? Um, if you have enough space on your drive, your external hard drive that you should be using, this wouldn't be an issue, obviously. But uh, So it wouldn't prompt you, it would just start creating anyway. But for the purposes right now, I'm going to say, no, I don't want to create. Um, you can just watch your status bar or set your machine and forget about it for about a day. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.